it's Friday. Friday, uh, our first hour of Friday, of course, Senator Bernie Sanders with us. Uh, our brunch with Bernie hour, uh, I think of him as America's senator. The people in Vermont know that he's theirs and <laughs> very proud of it. And uh, Senator Sanders, welcome. Good to be with you, Tom. And great to have you back with us. Oh, I, and I should mention your website, sanders.senate.gov, and particularly for people who in Vermont, uh, we've mentioned this before, looking for uh, help with the flooding disasters that have struck, you know, what was once my home state, you know, for, for five years, um, or for almost a decade, actually. Um, the information is at sanders.senate.gov. Right, Bernie. Tom, let me just, let me just start off um, by mentioning to the people in Vermont who may be listening uh, we have uh, four or five staff members going around the state checking out uh, towns that have been hard hit. And if my office can provide any information uh, that Vermonters may need, please give us a ring at our toll-free number, 1-800-339-9834. Okay. And uh, we will try to get you as much information as you can, how you can access uh, flood relief. Okay, and that's a, that's a number for Vermonters who are looking for Vermont, fr right. flood relief, not people who want to call into the program. Right. Um, right. And uh, uh, to call in, well, I won't, people know how to call in the program. <laughs> so, anyhow, last night the president, the night before last, we had the Republican debate. Last night the president gave a speech, some fairly clear contrasts. I'm curious your thoughts on all of the above, particularly the president's speech. Um, I was there. I thought, A, the speech was very well written, and B, I thought he delivered it very, very well. Uh, the issue that we're dealing with, Tom, as everybody knows, is real unemployment in America today is not 9%, it's 16%, counting those people who have given up looking for work and those people who work in part-time who want to work full-time. We have millions more workers who are working longer hours for lower wages than they used to. So we are really in the midst of a horrendous economic crisis not seen since the 1930s. Uh, I think the good news is that the president provided maybe a little bit more than some of us uh, had feared. Uh, but what remains to be seen is whether, given the extent of the uh, high level of unemployment that we're now facing, whether what he has proposed will go far enough. Certainly and absolutely, he touched on some very, very important issues. As you and I have discussed many times, the infrastructure in this country is collapsing. Uh, the uh, American Society of Civil Engineers suggests we need to spend over $2 trillion in the next five years just bringing our infrastructure up to a passable level. Uh, the president has proposed uh, to put uh, $50 billion into infrastructure. That is a good start. I hope that we can substantially raise that money, not only because we have to rebuild our roads and bridges and water systems, and high-speed rail uh, and broadband and so forth, but because that is also the fastest and most effective way of creating jobs. So I think his talking about infrastructure, putting in a significant amount of money, although not enough, is a good start. Uh, when the president talks about rehiring uh, some 280,000 teachers, police, and firefighters, he's absolutely right. Uh, local and state governments are stressed out uh, we have politicians talking about the need to educate our kids so they can compete uh, in the global marketplace, and yet we are laying off hundreds of thousands of teachers, child care workers, etc. That is totally absurd. So the president makes a good point. He is proposing to spend $35 billion uh, in that area. Uh, the president uh, wants $10 billion for a national infrastructure bank, which is an interesting concept. He wants $15 billion to rehab homes and vacant properties, which I think is a very, very good idea. So I think when the president talks about investing in America, investing in our kids, investing in our infrastructure, putting veterans back to work, I think he's doing the right thing. Where I have uh, some concerns uh, is a very significant part of this $447 billion uh, package has to do with tax breaks, extending and expanding the payroll tax holiday. Now, what's the problem with the payroll tax holiday? And Tom, not a lot of people are discussing this, but it's important to raise this issue very forcefully. This money is money that is being diverted from the Social Security Trust Fund. 
So right now people say, well, isn't that great? I'm going to get a $500 or $1,000 or a $1,500 tax break. Yeah, but that money was supposed to be going into the Social Security Trust Fund. Now, what the president will say is not to worry. The federal government will cover that. We'll cover that. Right. Problem is the federal government has a 14 plus trillion dollar national debt. Social Security is under attack every single day. So I am less than enthusiastic about seeing substantial sums of money diverted from the Social Security Trust Fund. Yes, working families need a tax break, but I want to see that money come from another source other than the Social Security Trust Fund. Second point of concern, uh, President talked about, quote unquote, reforming Medicare and Medicaid. Well, we don't know exactly what that means. Um, if the president is, for example, suggesting that we can save substantial sums of money by having Medicare negotiate prescription drug prices with the pharmaceutical industry, as does the Veterans Administration and the Department of Defense, that is an excellent reform. Excellent reform. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, if his so-called reform means that we're gonna raise the eligibility level for, for Medicare from 65 to 67, that is a disaster for a whole lot of people. I just want people to be thinking about someone who is 66, doesn't have a whole lot of money, and has some serious health issues. Where do you think you're gonna be able to get the health care that you need? No insurance company, no private insurance company is gonna provide you with a package that will work for you. President also talks about, quote unquote, reforming Medicaid. I don't know exactly what that means. What I do know is we have 50 million people in this country today who have no health insurance. And if reforming Medicaid means throwing people off of Medicaid, that is not a reform that I will support. In terms of health care, whether you talk about Medicare or Medicaid, what must be understood is, of course, we need significant reforms. And the direction that we should be moving is, in my view, is a single payer Medicare for all program for every man, woman and child in this country. And I say that not only because it's the moral thing to do, it is the cost effective thing to do. Right now, as a nation, we are spending close to twice as much per person on health care as do the people of any other nation. So we do need reforms to make our system more cost effective, but reform should not mean raising the eligibility age for Medicare or throwing children or working families uh, off of Medicaid. It's a great analysis. Uh, Senator Bernie Sanders is with us. Uh, it's our Brunch with Bernie hour here on the Tom Hartman program. Senator Sanders will be back in just a moment with more of your calls or to, to take your calls for our national town hall meeting here on the Tom Hartman program with Senator Bernie Sanders. Brunch with Bernie, 866-987-THOM, 866-745-2667. We'll be right back. This is the Tom Hartman Program. And check out Bernie's website, sanders.senate.gov. Uh, great news, uh, great information there, great news site, great newsletter. And if you live in Vermont, information on how you can deal with it. We're back, Tom Hartman here with you. It's our Brunch with Bernie Hour. Senator Bernie Sanders on the line with us. And taking your calls, Stan in Ross, California. You are on the air with Senator Sanders. Before we take this one, let me Certainly. just continue the response to Steve. Uh, okay, hold, on. hold on just a second here, uh, Stan. Yeah, Steve, if yeah. you could just hold on. What seems to me the most effective thing that we can do, whether you call it another WPA or CCC from the 1930s, mm. the issue is to identify the real needs facing our country, invest in those needs, and you put people to work in that process. For example, everybody knows the horrendous condition of our roads, our bridges, water systems, wastewater plants, our rail system is falling further and further behind Europe and even China, Airports need a lot of work. Once you identify what has to be done, let's get the work done. And when you do that, call it CCC, call it the WPA, call it whatever you want. You're going to put millions of people back to work in this country, making our country more productive, more efficient, more internationally competitive. Of all of the things that we can do that make sense to me to create the millions of jobs that we have to do, that's the direction that we have to go. Stan in Ross, California. You're on the air with Senator Sanders. Thanks, Tom. First of all, Tom, thanks for turning me on to Mike Farrell for a documentary that was really great. I appreciate that. Senator sure. Sanders, I had a question for you. I listened to the speech last night, and I kept waiting and waiting and waiting 
for the president to mention increase in tariffs in order to get rid of these cheap products coming in from China. This is what's really going to create jobs in the United States. The infrastructure and the rest of them are, I think they're more temporary in the sense that once you complete a project, you hopefully move on to another one. Manufacturing needs to come back to the U.S. in a big way. And I didn't hear a single word about what you described a couple weeks ago about slowly deliberately raising tariffs on these products to make the, 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 the level playing field. Well, let me say this. You did hear a word about it, but the words that you heard were the wrong words. The words that you heard last night is the president indicating once again his support for Bush's trade policy, uh, which includes uh, new trade agreements with uh, Korea, uh, Panama, and Colombia. That's what you did hear. And in my view, that's exactly what we should not have been hearing. Uh, I agree with the caller that our current trade policy has been an unmitigated disaster, uh, that it is one of the reasons why manufacturing in the United States, job manufacturing jobs in the United States have significantly uh, declined, uh, why we have lost uh, 50,000 factories in the last 10 years. Uh, permanent normal trade relations with China has cost us over 2 million jobs. And you don't have to be an economist to know that when you go shopping in a department store, most of the products that you will buy are made in China, that it is harder and harder to buy a product made in the United States of America. And in fact, these trade agreements with Korea, with Colombia, with Panama, are only going to continue, in my view, the process of enabling corporations to shut down in America and outsource to these other countries. And I think the caller is absolutely right. We need a new trade policy based on fair trade, not unfettered free trade. American workers should not be forced to compete against people who make a fraction of the wages that we make. Steve in Brattleboro, Vermont, you're on the air, and thanks for listening to WKPT. What's up? Tom, it's Steve West calling from WKVT. Senator Sanders, hi. Um, I, I do radio, so I don't want to spend too much time with you, but I do want to say this. Um, as Senator Sanders knows, and Tom, you've been hearing too, the people of Vermont are amazing and extraordinary. We've seen a lot of it during what's happened in the last couple of weeks. I want to just wrap that into a question that says, I think Vermont can in many ways be a, a leading example for the rest of the country in terms of what happens when people get together on, a, on an individual and community basis and make things happen and don't wait around for governmental intervention. And I wouldn't mind Senator Sanders speaking to that because the spirit of the people of Vermont has saved lives and is reconstructing our lovely state. And I'm proud to be from Vermont and I'm proud to be uh, able to represent it on the radio. But I'd love to hear Senator Sanders just talk about the great people of Vermont. Well, I certainly agree with you, Steve. I was down in Brattleboro uh, last Saturday and then over to Wilmington, a town in uh, South Central Vermont, which has really been hit hard. I went to some trailer parks and, and senior housing in Brattleboro, a town which has also been hit hard. Mm. And I think what we are seeing in Vermont, what Steve is talking about, uh, is just a, a huge number of people coming out to give support to their friends, neighbors. People are coming from other parts of the state. I was down in uh, Wilmington. We had police officers from the northern part of the state coming down and the southern part of the state helping out because they knew the kind of stress uh, that law enforcement people were operating under in Brattleboro and Wilmington. Uh, so Steve is absolutely right. But Steve, the issue is it is people coming together, but the government is going to play a very important role in rebuilding Vermont. That's local government, that's state government, and that is federal government. One of the things we're working on right now is to make sure that we have a significant disaster relief uh, program. We get it passed as quickly as possible, not only to help the communities in Vermont, uh, but to help communities in New Jersey, North Carolina, and other towns uh, that have been hit. But you're absolutely right. Vermonters have really uh, stood up and, and, and reached out to help their brothers and sisters. Dan in Asheville, North Carolina, listening on Maine FM. We have a minute to the break. Dan, uh, sure. your question? Yes, yeah, Senator, uh, the majority of the money in the president's proposed bill comes from tax cuts. Have you changed your mind? Do you believe today that tax cuts create jobs? No, it's not a question. As I indicated earlier, uh, I believe that we should significantly spend more money uh, in investing in America. That's infrastructure, education, energy. That's the way I think you create jobs. On the other hand, do I think at a time when we're in the midst of a severe recession that working families need some help and that we should 
provide tax relief to working families? I do. Uh, my concern there is that the money now is being diverted from the Social Security Trust Fund, and that concerns me very much. Right. And there's a difference in the effect of tax breaks for working people and tax breaks for billionaires. Absolutely. Yeah. So, Senator Bernie Sanders with us. It's our Brunch with Bernie hour on the Tom Hartman program. Check out his website, sanders.senate.gov. Uh, for anywhere in the country, it's a great news resource. There's links to his Facebook page and, and his newsletter, the Bernie Buzz. 